Hello there, this is Rahul and welcome to the Ansible series. In the ninth part of this series, we will be talking about Ansible conditionals. Now the question comes like what is conditional in Ansible? So if you are familiar with any programming languages, then you might have used the if statement for evaluating any conditions. Similarly, in Ansible, we have a conditional which will help us to evaluate any condition. And based on that condition, we will be taking the next step or we will be executing the next Ansible instructions. Here onto the screen, you can see on the left hand side, it's a traditional if condition with on any other programming languages. So where you specify if and inside that you specify a condition and after that you write a code which you want to execute based on that particular condition. But in Ansible, we actually don't have a if condition. Instead, we have a when condition. So whenever we need to put any condition, then we are just going to use the when conditional inside your Ansible playbook. In the beginning, it might sound complicated, but in actual, it is really simple to implement a conditional using a when condition. So here onto the screen, if I scroll it down, I have taken a very basic example to understand this one conditional. So here, this is my playbook uh, where I'm just trying to install an Apache server onto my remote server. But I want to install this Apache server based on one condition. So here you can see this is the condition which I have specified using the one. So here inside that condition, you will see a flag that is install Apache flag. So that's a Boolean flag which I have kept. And if you see below over here, so this is the value of that particular variable. And here this value is Boolean. So based on true and false, I'll be able to install that particular Apache. So in variable file, if you have kept the value true, which you can see over here, the value is true. So in that case, if whenever I'm just going to execute this particular playbook, I'm talking about this playbook, then it is going to install the Apache server. But in case if this particular value, this particular variable value is false, then in that case, our uh, Apache server will not be installed using our Ansible playbook. So that's the simplest implementation uh, which you can see over here using the when condition. And don't worry, we are just going to perform a demo after this uh, where we are going to implement this when condition inside our Ansible playbook. Alright, so now you're a bit familiar with the when condition. And in the previous example, we have just seen one condition inside the when conditional block. But now, what if, if we can specify multiple conditions inside our when conditional block? So here in this example and onto this screen, you can see the example where I have taken the when block and inside that when block, I have specified multiple condition. So this is going to be my first condition and this is going to be my second condition. And if both conditions are true, then after that, this whole Ansible playbook is going to execute and it is going to install anything or any task which you want to perform. All right. So that's a one way of specifying multiple condition inside your van block. Now I'm taking a one more example over here. I will increase the font size over here. So here you can tr use our traditional AND operator. So here again, you can specify multiple condition, but instead of putting the condition into the next line, you can use the AND operator and specify the condition in a single line. So here you can see, uh, this is the first condition which I have specified over here. And if I scroll it horizontally, then this is the AND condition, which you can see. So this is the AND condition, which is sitting in between. And this is the second condition, which I have specified. So this is a more traditional way of specifying multiple condition inside our van conditional. So it's up to you, uh, which one you want to prefer and which one you want to use. I personally like to prefer this previous one where we have like a define each condition into the next line so that it's more readable and more concise. Now moving to the next topic inside our conditional. So here I'm just talking about the putting a condition on a particular value and that value can be stored inside a variable. So we can specify conditions based on the value of a particular variable. So here onto the screen you can see uh, this is the Ansible playbook where we are registering a variable. So this is uh, a register keyword which is provided by Ansible. And here we are just specifying a variable name that is test file content. That's the variable name which I have created. And inside that particular variable, we are just going to store the value of this particular text file. I'm just going to show everything into the demo. But this is the text file uh, which is present onto my remote server and whatever content present inside that text file, I'm just going to store inside this particular variable. So that's the first part of Ansible playbook. And what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to put the condition on that particular variable. So here in the next uh, Ansible playbook task, you will see I'm putting a van block over here. So if you can see over here, this is the van. And here I'm just specifying the condition on that particular variable. So here you can see test file content. 
std out you need to uh, fetch that particular value inside from inside the variable so that's why i'm just using std out that's a standard output and after that i'm just putting a find condition because i'm expecting a high content i have just uh, it is just a manual text which i have put inside the text file so i'm expecting it will return high so i'm just trying to find that particular content and if this particular condition satisfied then i'll say yeah just execute this particular task so this is the condition which i have put over here so when this particular condition is satisfied, then I'm just going to print out the output of that particular variable. So that's how you're just going to uh, like register a variable, assign some value to it. And later on, you're just going to evaluate that particular value based on the when conditional. So this is how you can play around with the variables also. All right, moving to the next topic in conditional. So now I'm going to talk about the loops and you might be familiar with the for loop or for each loop in any of the programming languages, for example, Python, Java, Go or any programming languages. They must have a, some kind of a looping a logic implemented inside those programming languages. But here in Ansible, we can also use the looping. And here I have just taken a very simple example where I have created a, like a condition uh, based on the value of that particular uh, list, actually. So here I'm just first of all going to define the loop. That's the keyword from Ansible. And here I'm just going to specify the array of numbers. And based on certain condition, I'm just going to uh, like print uh, the value of those uh, variables which is present inside my array. But the condition is I'm just going to print the value which are only greater than five. So here I have specified that condition over here. So when this loop is getting executed, then this when condition will be evaluated i'm talking about this van condition and when this condition is evaluated then we are just going to evaluate whether that value is lesser than five or greater than five if it's greater than five then we are just going to do the print of that particular value so this is how you also can use the van conditional inside your loops and the last topic before the demo is ansible facts so we can use the condition the van condition on ansible facts also so Ansible facts are something which is like inbuilt. So if you're trying to run an Ansible playbook on a remote machine, then Ansible facts will always hold the value of that particular remote machine. And what does it mean by value? I'm not referring to a single value, but I'm referring here to the multiple values. So it might contain what's the remote IP, what's the operating system, whether it's a CentOS, whether it's a Debian, and what's the version it is running, what's the CPU type, what's the chip type. So all these information, which is like a metadata about that particular machine will be stored automatically inside the Ansible facts. And using those Ansible facts, which you can see, I have just taken one example of this Ansible facts uh, from the Ansible documentation. So these are the facts you can capture for that particular remote machine. And these uh, particular uh, variables like uh, uh, all IP addresses and uh, also there are like uh, Ansible app armor. So these are the facts which is readily available to you. So you can put the condition on these particular Ansible facts also. So here I have taken one example, which you can see over here. So here I, I have just specified the van condition, but this van condition is running on the Ansible facts. This is the keyword and what Ansible facts I just wanted to evaluate. So I just want to evaluate the OS family. So what's the OS family of the remote machine? So that's the one condition I'm just going to evaluate since I'm running the Ubuntu and which is a Debian based. So I just I'm expecting the value is to be Debian. So these conditionals you can put onto the Ansible facts also. So this is just a one more concept which is left inside the conditional, which is I just wanted to show you before the demo. Alright, so moving to my IntelliJ where I have written my Ansible playbook and on the left hand side you will see this is the project which I have created onto my GitHub repository. I'll put the link of this particular GitHub repository into the description section. So feel free to clone that particular repository. So here this is uh, the project structure and here I have created a part 9 and inside that you will find a task and variables file and also the main playbook. And after that, you will find a readme file. So you can just simply copy this Ansible playbook command from here to run this particular Ansible playbook. But in the host file, you need to uh, update the remote host IP. So here I'm just using my AWS EC2 instance, which is running onto the uh, AWS cloud. So that's why I'm using it over here. But instead, uh, you can use your own remote machine. All right, so that's all about the practicalities of this particular project. But let's go back to the uh, actual code where I have specified these conditionals. 
So here, this is the first block where I have specified install Apache web server based on the condition that is install Apache flag, and that's a Boolean variable. So let's check the value of that particular vari uh, Boolean variable, and that is true. So that means if I'm going to execute this particular Ansible playbook, then it is going to install the Apache server onto my remote machine. So that's the first use case. What else I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna remove rest of the detail so that we only run the required one. I'm just gonna save this thing. Go to the readme file over here, copy this ansible playbook command, open the terminal, and here into the terminal, uh, you can just simply paste that particular command for executing your, your ansible playbook. Uh, let me check the folder where I am in. So I need to switch to see, uh, part nine. I'll clear the screen and just check. Yeah, I'm inside my directory, that is part nine. And after that, you can just simply run that command. This is the command which I'm just going to execute, simply execute it. All right, so here you can see uh, that it has successfully executed the install Apache web server. So that means based on that particular condition, which is true right now, it is able to install the Apache. But I'm just going to do one more thing. Uh, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to uh, update the value and set it to false. So once we set anything or this particular condition to false, then it is going to skip that particular installation step. So I'll just go back to terminal once again, and I'm just gonna re-execute. Although we have installed Apache, but our main intention is not to install Apache, but instead we just wanted to check the condition. So here you can see it has skipped that particular step. So what does it mean? So that means that based on that particular condition, it is evaluating whether it, ha uh, whether it has to execute that Ansible task or not. So in that case, when we have set the value to false, it has just skipped that particular task. Now, in the next example, we are just gonna evaluate multiple condition based on the Ansible facts. So here onto the screen, you can see this is the when condition which I have specified, but inside that when condition, I have a specified couple of more condition. And these conditions are just simply checking the Ansible facts. So the facts where I'm talking about is the OS family. So what kind of a OS family the remote machine belongs to? And since it's Ubuntu best, so that's a Debian. So that's the first check. Secondly, what's the distribution major version? So what's the OS version of that Linux machine? So which is 20, so that I already know it. So that's why I have put this particular condition. So again, let's go back to terminal over here. I'm just gonna clear the previous output and I'm just gonna simply run the Ansible playbook. And here you can see, uh, since the previous value we have set for install Apache to false, that's why it has been skipped, but this task combined condition using Ansible has executed successfully. And if we check over here, then what we are doing over here, when this particular both the conditions are passed, then we are just printing the kernel version into the console. So here, just go back to terminal and check. So here you can see the Ansible kernel version, which is 40, Ubuntu, SMP, and the timestamp. So which has evaluated that particular condition has evaluated that condition properly. And our both the facts, Ansible facts are true, and we have got the output over here. Okay, moving back to my Ansible playbook. So here I have specified the same condition using the and condition over here. So you can see, uh, again, the Ansible facts I'm checking over here are same. I'm just still checking the Debian, as well as I'm just checking the version, which is what is the major version, and that has to be greater than 20. So that's the only change which I have did from the previous condition where I was checking for exact 20 version, but here I'm just checking a version which is greater than or equal to 20. But rest of the conditions are same. So I just wanted to demonstrate you, that's why I have put this particular task over here. So onto the terminal, if you go back, I'll clear the screen once again, and you can just simply run the Ansible playbook. And here you can see the setting complex condition that was my task name, and we can verify it over here. So setting complex condition, and here we are having two conditions. This is the first one, and this is the second one. And onto the terminal, you will see the output, the Ansible kernel version, which is 40. So that's how you can put multiple conditions inside your Ansible task within your Ansible playbook. All right, now moving to the next example where I have shown or where I have already explained like how to register a variable and then assign a value to that particular variable and then evaluate that particular variable. So here, I'm just first of all gonna register a variable uh, with the name test file content. And after that, I'm just gonna evaluate the value of that particular variable. And the value I'm expecting over here is just a two character, which is high. So I'm expecting a file to be present at that particular location. So I'm just gonna go to my terminal and this is my remote machine. I'll just clear the screen, just check the path that I'm into under home slash Ubuntu. Just do the ls to verify the file. There is a file test file.txt and you can just do the cat to verify the content. 
and here you can see the content of uh, file is just a simple two character which is high so i'm just gonna fetch this particular value of a file inside the variable and then i'm just gonna evaluate the condition so this is the command uh, to do the cat and it will register into this variable and then we are just gonna do the standard out and then compare the value all right so let's go back and here after the comparing the value this will debug and print the value of that particular variable so that we know that condition has been evaluated so let's go back to terminal and uh, i'll clear the screen over here and simply execute the playbook and here you can see first of all it has registered the variable so it has fetched the value of that particular file and after that it has evaluated that condition and print the value of that particular variable so which you can see which is high so here uh, this is the output which we have just verified all right now moving to the next example where i have shown the loop so here i have specified the array so where i'm just gonna loop so that array contains the value 0 2 4 6 8 and 10 but the condition which i'm putting over here is item should be greater than 5 and once the value is greater than 5 then i'm just gonna print the value of that particular item so that's the simplest uh, like a for loop or the loop which i have implemented over here so I'm just gonna go head over to terminal. I'm just gonna clear the screen and run the playbook. And here you can see the output onto the terminal. But if you take a look carefully, then you need to check which part has been skipped and which part has been changed. So this skipped part, which means we, we, are, we are not printing zero, two, and four. I mean, these values are skipped because those were lesser than five. But the values which are greater than five has been uh, printed over here with a changed, uh, like a highlighted. So these are the values which has been entertained and which has been printed using that for loop. So that's how you're just going to iterate over a loop using the conditional. And moving to the last part where I was talking about the Ansible facts and you can put multiple Ansible facts inside your van conditional. So here I have just taken a fact. Uh, the Ansible fact is a keyword over here. And the fact I'm verifying is the operating system family. And I'm expecting value to be Debian. If it's Debian, then I'm just going to print the distribution name of that particular Ansible fact. So go to terminal, clear the screen. Uh, the screen is already cleared. So I'm just going to execute the playbook. And here you can see uh, Ansible distribution, which is Ubuntu. So that's how I'm just going to evaluate uh, my uh, Ansible facts. And after evaluating inside the van condition, I'm just going to print the van. All right. So that concludes our ninth lab session on Ansible. Until now, we have covered fourth chapter, which you can see over here from the content page. And in the next chapter, we'll be talking about the roles and the tasks associated with your Ansible playbook. And in that session, we'll be talking about how to import the roles, how to import the different tasks inside your Ansible playbook. So stay tuned for that. And if you are interested into the similar content on DevOps, where I talk about Terraform, Kubernetes, Docker, containers, and Helm chart, then please consider subscribing to this channel because there are similar sessions I have planned in the future and upcoming months, which you will see onto this channel. So till then, take care and bye-bye.